Prime Minister, first first question. Can I ask you, how is your country coping with the large flow of Ukrainian refugees into Moldova? Indeed, the war uh, on Ukraine has caused a massive inflow of refugees to the country. Uh, as of today, we have more than 270 uh, thousand people who have crossed uh, the border from Ukraine, and we have about 100,000 Ukrainian refugees who are here in the country. Uh, this is about 3% of the stable population, uh, and every eighth child now is a refugee child. Uh, so this is a massive number for Moldova. Uh, and, um, you know, we have never seen before uh, such a, a refugee crisis. Um, the government has uh, uh, done everything possible to provide shelter, food services, um, and, uh, you know, first assistance to the refugees. But uh, dealing with such a large flow would not have been possible if we didn't have an extraordinary mobilization of every part of the society. Uh, you know, we have civil society organizations that got involved quickly. Uh, we have uh, thousands of volunteers. Uh, we have private sector companies who have uh, come to support the government effort. Uh, and we have, uh, you know, regular families uh, who have taken in Ukrainian families into their homes. So we're seeing this uh, extraordinary solidarity, but of course, Moldova is a country with limited resources, uh, and we urgently need assistance and help uh, to support this uh, uh, effort, because we see that uh, the number of people is uh, continuing and uh, UNHCR estimates that the numbers will grow um, and uh, we, we, we will soon, very soon, uh, reach our capacities if we don't see urgent uh, help from uh, international organizations and from our part international partners. Yes, I mean, you've had over a quarter of a million refugees into Moldova. That's the largest proportion compared to the size of your population of any country in the world. The, the American Secretary of State has promised help to countries including Moldova. Tell me, how badly do you need that? What can you do if, as you say, you reach capacity? Um, you know, the, there is uh, little that we can do without international help. So uh, we have been engaging uh, in a very active dialogue uh, to ensure green corridors uh, first of all, to Romania, because our only other neighbor uh, is uh, Romania, and uh, the Romanian government uh, has been uh, uh, open to support us in ensuring uh, the flow of refugees to Romania and other countries. Uh, you know, we now need uh, actually, uh, you know, more buses, more trains. Uh, we need uh, flights, uh, humanitarian flights, to uh, take the refugees to other countries. Uh, but we also now see the uh, UNHCR coming in. Uh, we are starting to receive, uh, you know, humanitarian assistance, um, uh, kits for the refugees, uh, programs that would allow uh, refugees to access some resources. Uh, but we also need. Uh, financial resources. We have opened uh, a donations account, uh, and uh, you know we need financial resources to flow into this account to uh, cover the uh, growing costs of operations of all our services, all our government uh, institutions, um, and we also need support in dealing with the consequences of the war uh, because we have. Uh, close ties to Ukraine uh, in terms of our trade. Value chains have been disrupted. Um, and, uh, you know, we uh, are closely watching uh, risks to, to our food security uh, and uh, to uh, our uh, economic and financial stability. We have an emergency committee. We have taken very swift action. So, for example, we have uh, banned exports of uh, grains and corn and sugar and other staples, uh, and we're watching uh, supplies. 
Um, uh, we have also helped companies reorient their trade to the Romanian Constanza port from the Odessa port. We have um, taken action to accept, for example, uh, EU certifications without any uh, requirements uh, from the, you know, further requirements for authorization by the Moldovan government. Uh, but, uh, you know, the longer that uh, this uh, uh, war goes on, uh, you know, the harder it will be yes. uh, for the Ukrainian refugees in Moldova, but also for the Moldovan people. Okay. Could I ask you, Prime Minister, about the the physical security of, of Moldova? The American Secretary of State has said that he would be prepared to mobilise international action in the event of Russian aggression against any any other country. You're bordering a nation to Ukraine. Do you feel reassured by that kind of that kind of statement? We live in a complicated region, and of course, uh, Moldova has a separatist region um, at, the, at, at the eastern border, uh, you know, right at the border with Ukraine. Um, and this is a region that uh, the constitutional authorities uh, of the country do not control, and we have Russian troops there. So uh, certainly there are some risks and concerns. Uh, but we are reassured uh, by the fact that so far we are not seeing any plan, plans for engagement uh, from that territory and, uh, uh, you know, the information um, and uh, support of our partners uh, is very important. We are a neutral country and we hope that the whole international community will support us uh, in ensuring this neutrality. Prime Minister, how... How confident can you be about the security of Moldova? You refer to the uh, to the breakaway region of of, of Trans, Transnistria, which, as you say, has over a thousand Russian troops stationed there, and many will say that it's the sort of area that Vladimir Putin may well wish to uh, to take control of. Do you imagine the Russian president might respect your country's neutrality? Uh, look, in, in a world uh, where international law is not uh, upheld, where uh, peace agreements are not respected, where international uh, commitments um, are not followed, then uh, no one is safe. And this yes. is why, you know, we have condemned from the very first day uh, this war on Ukraine. Uh, and we call for all efforts to restore peace uh, and uh, the rule of international law. I mean, as you say, it is very difficult, impossible, to respect the the word of Moscow in these in these matters. Have you sought, as Prime Minister, have you sought any reassurances from Moscow about the safety and security of Moldova? We have done this uh, all along, um, you know, in, in, in the history, as I say, we have a separatist region and we have negotiating uh, formats. Uh, we have, uh, a, you know, a, a complex uh, foreign policy and uh, with uh, Russia. And we have always sought for, for, this, uh, 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 for this to happen. Yes. I mean, the question is, of course, hypothetical, but we've seen in Ukraine how the people of Ukraine have responded to the invasion of Russia with incredible bravery, with enormous courage. From what you know of your own country, do you believe that Moldovans, people there in your country, would be willing to defend their land as Ukrainians are defending theirs? Uh, as you have mentioned yourself, this is a hypothetical question. Uh, we are uh, very much concentrating on the real uh, challenges that we have now and dealing with uh, this uh, refugee inflow and helping to the best of our ability the Ukrainian citizens who are and other citizens, in fact. So the refugees who are fleeing uh, the war and uh, concentrating on uh, managing the economic and social consequences for our own countries. Of course, as a government, we have to uh, be prepared for any hypothetical scenario. Uh, but, uh, you know, we are very much concentrating on doing the job now and then, you know, taking the risks as they uh, transpire or arise. I mean, I do understand why you would be 
reluctant to address directly the hypothesis of a of a Russian in, invasion. Tell me your thoughts, though, on the way Ukraine and Ukrainians have have responded. You'll feel a kinship, I'm sure, with the people of Ukraine. What do you make of their their resistance, their defiance to the invasion? Uh, of course, uh, you know, uh, we uh, admire uh, the uh, will of the Ukrainian people to protect their right for self-determination. You know, we think that uh, any country and any people uh, have uh, this fundamental right under international law. Uh, and uh, uh, I think this is precisely why you see this unity and solidarity within the Moldovan society where practically every element of the society has mobilized uh, to help uh, the Ukrainian people. I remind you that a lot of these refugees have left their uh, abled men uh, behind. So these are women with children. Uh, men between the ages of 18 and 60 are not allowed to leave Ukraine. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, we uh, are supporting to the best of our abilities uh, these women who, um, you know, on one hand, uh, sort of have their loved ones uh, back home fighting uh, for their uh, independence and sovereignty. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, are dealing with their children or elderly parents uh, and uh, have to uh, make sure that they, they are protected and safe. Uh, it is, so, indeed, it, yes, it is International Women's Day. And you mentioned the, uh, the, the conduct of women looking after their families, responding to the invasion of, of Ukraine. The women of Ukraine have been setting a, a quite extraordinary example, have they not? Indeed, they have. Um, and uh, I will give you an example of, um, uh, you know, refugees that I have visited in a government placement centers. Uh, I have seen a group of women uh, who worked together and they all uh, left together with a group of children. So it was women and children. And they have quickly mobilized where, you know, some of them were taking care of the children, some of them were improving their dwelling conditions, and then some of them were working because they thought it was important to work and contribute even in these times, you know, to minimize the disruption yeah. uh, that is caused by the war uh, uh, on the Ukrainian economy. And, uh, you know, what better testament uh, to the struggle uh, of women for equality uh, and, um, you know, the ability uh, to, to, to work, uh, you know, than, than uh, on, on this 8th of March, you know, on this International Women's Day. Uh, than this example where, you know, women are uh, both ensuring the security of their loved ones and uh, being very active members of their societies, even if they are under, um, uh, you know, uh, strain, under difficult conditions in a different country uh, with a lot of us facing a lot of uncertainty and with a lot of anxiety for their loved ones who remain in Ukraine. Yes, I mean, the, the example of women and men in Ukraine has been absolutely inspirational. As far as the future, the future is concerned, you apply, you've applied now to join the European Union. That may be a, a rather distant prospect, but clearly your ambitions for your country and the people of Moldova, you look west for that, for that future. And you'll know better than I, Prime Minister, that will be, well, that will be a source of, of fury to the Russian leader, Putin. We are indeed um, uh, struggling, st striving to join the European Union. Uh, you know, we've had an association agreement with the European Union and, f and a deep and comprehensive free trade agreement with the European Union uh, for a number of years now. Uh, we, uh, unlike Ukraine, we do not seek uh, to join a military alliance. Uh, and this is actually uh, enshrined in our constitution, but also the choice of the people. So if you look at the polls in Moldova, you know, Moldovans very much support this uh, idea of uh, neutrality. So, um, you know, we think that uh, accession 
is the logical next step is something that we have been working towards uh, and you know we have been doing our homework and uh, we think that particularly at this time uh, providing a candidate status for Ukraine, Moldova and Georgia would actually provide this important symbolism for the people that they would be welcome uh, in uh, in the EU uh, where you know they could count on the respect of human rights on democratic institutions, on the rule of law, uh, and uh, a development that upholds all these values. So we understand that it's a long road ahead. We understand that we need to do our homework, but you know this this hope, this uh, uh, light at the end of the uh, tunnel is particularly important now. Uh, we uh, have never hidden our European aspirations. The Moldovan people have voted in the last elections massively uh, for a majority pro-European uh, party. Um, and we now have the president, the parliament and the government all aligned uh, under these uh, European aspiration. And, uh, you know, we have uh, discussed this uh, with the Russian Federation. Um, and, uh, you know, until now, we have not seen this to be a problem. Yeah, I mean, you, your dream is to be a part of the the free Western family of, of nations. Let me just ask you this. We can't know the answer, but what do you imagine it will take to end this war and to restore some kind of peace to Eastern Europe? Can there be peace, Prime Minister, in your view, while Vladimir Putin is still leader of Russia? Um, you know, it's very unfortunate that... Uh, uh, we have this war and uh, the diplomatic solutions do not work. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I really hope that, uh, um, you know, after seeing this uh, uh, resistance of the Ukrainian people um, and, uh, you know, this proof uh, that, uh, you know, they are um, uh, determined in their self-determination uh, that a diplomatic solution uh, can be found. Lastly, Prime Minister, what is your message to the Russian president? Um, you know, I we have consistently called for all parties involved to be at the negotiating table and to, uh, uh, you know, find ways uh, to ensure peace and stability that is necessary for the development uh, of our countries that is so necessary to improve the well-being of our people. Uh, if you put people's interests um, first and foremost, then, you know, this will lead to different uh, solutions. Prime Minister, thank you so much for talking to us this afternoon. I wish you well. Thank you.